I was always interested in science and the natural world. I used to take field notes from my front porch on the birds and the squirrels. I asked for a microscope for my sixth birthday and I would dissect insects and look at their wings and legs underneath the microscope. And then I went off to grad school after completing a, a regular bachelor's degree in biology, but I thought at that point I wanted to study animal behavior and I was working on bats. And the more I was working on these bats, the more I got interested in their parasites. So I decided to switch gears entirely and to focus on working on parasites, especially those in the blood of animals. Parasites uh, are a dominant form of life on Earth. They have such an important effect on other animals, so they affect their behavior, their ecology, and their evolution. I got interested in working on malaria because my PhD advisor, Joe Shaw at the University of Vermont, had been working on malarial parasites in lizards. We don't normally think about lizards having malaria, but in fact, there are over 200 species of malaria that infect other animals. I really wanted to do some genetic work on non-mammal malaria parasites. Malaria still is killing probably about two million people a year and sickening half a billion people People, so it's still one of the major diseases on the planet. We've sequenced the entire genomes for the species that cause malaria in humans, but we would get a lot farther, I think, if we had some more distantly related parasites to compare uh, with the human parasites. I always say to people I have the dream job of a six-year-old boy because a lot of what I get to do is travel to fun and interesting places and chase and catch lizards and then take that blood sample. We almost always return the lizards back to where we caught them, but then I also can't wait to come back in the lab and look at it under my, my microscope and see if there are parasites in there. Microorganisms uh, comprise most of the diversity of life on Earth, but especially the bacteria are really difficult to put into the tree of life, and that's because bacteria frequently will swap genes. And so when we sequence genes to try to use them to reconstruct the tree of life, we might be sequencing a gene that has recently jumped from one microorganism into another, and so that will take us on a false path of how they were related. Only by sequencing many, many, many genes, in fact, the whole genome of some of the microorganisms, can we get enough of the true information to outweigh the genes that may have jumped. I'm really interested in, in using these genomes from these organisms to really get a handle on how organismal diversity arose. So, I mean, it's interesting to walk through the hall of vertebrates here and see all the dinosaurs, but really when you get down to it, they're pretty similar. Whereas if you looked at microorganisms, they are so diverse in terms of their shapes and sizes and what they can do um, that we can just learn so much more about how life arose on the planet by looking at the things we can't see.